Hey, Jalen, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, so with with this sort of home game sort of in the, the rear view now that you guys are back from the three-game road trip, is it still hard to go right back out on the road again now that, you know, you got a little bit of taste of home after not having it for so long? Uh, definitely. It's always hard to win on the road, um, especially in the Big Ten and going to a place like Wisconsin where they're, you know, one of the better teams in the league. You know, you have to come prepared and focus on what's ahead. We haven't had a good showing yet on the road in a couple of games, so we need to have a good, a good game. Hey, Jalen, um, how does Seth's defense against some of the premier players in the Big Ten affect the rest of the team's play defensively? Uh, it's really big for us. Uh, Seth really locks into it and focuses on it. And, you know, we all feed off of his energy and his leadership. Definitely going up um, against the best player. He wants to show that he's one of the better players in our league. And we all enjoy him competing, and it just brings a different level of energy for us. Hey, Jalen, how you doing? Good. Um, how does playing on the road in the Big Ten compare uh, to, to what you did when you were at Siena? Um, I guess just the environments that you have to play in, the whole experience, what's, what's different about that? Oh, my God, it's great. I love it. I mean, so many people are at the games, and then, like, the fans and the students are, like, right on top of you. Um, the student sections are great. You know, you didn't really have that. And, like, the Mac, it was more of a just, like, an older crowd, and it was um, definitely smaller gyms. But, you know, just so many people, and the different atmosphere is just great. I love it. Hey, Jalen, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Um, is there, like, some innate – part of you that just likes when the shot clock is running out like like what's going on there um you know then the shot clock you know you just got to get a shot up i think you know it just goes back to like we play a lot of one-on-ones like after practice everybody and you know just practicing different angles and different shots i mean it's nothing crazy <laughs> jalen uh, after the game uh john said that late in overtime when you guys were in the huddle that that he told miles that he wanted miles to take that shot and, and miles was going to make that shot. i mean what is it? Miles has done this a lot in his career. I mean, what is it about him that makes him the guy that you want to have the ball in his hands at that point in the game? Uh, Miles is a great shooter. He's a confident shooter, and we feel like um, he's done it for so many times that we feel like he's the most comfortable in that situation, especially being down three, being probably our best three-point shooter that we want to try and get him a look. And so we try to get him on a little, like, slip screen, and they got it pretty well. But, I mean, Miles is just as clutch as they come. So he made a good bump fake and made the shot. We all agree with Miles taking that last shot. And, you know, down the stretch, we know he's going to hit one more or two more for us whenever we need it. Have any of those those buzzer beaters surprised you, though? I mean, the the one against Iowa, you basically turned around and said a light prayer and then just threw it, and it goes in. I mean, at some point here, you practice it, but you still go, oh, well, that went in. I mean, it, is there a certain amount of that that, that has happened with any of these? Um, I think the Indiana one, where I, like, threw it behind my bag and then just tossed that one up. I was like, I thought it was way off, and then you, like, roll, it, like, went in the air, and it went in, and I was like, wow, that was... That was something right there. I'm not going to say it wasn't. I was like, wow, that was a good shot. You mentioned playing one-on-one -on -one after practice. Who wins most of those? And who are you usually playing against? Um, I win most of those, um, of course. Uh, uh, me, Greg Lee, Sam Sassons play a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Ja, um, Caleb, Giovanni, Jelani. I mean, it depends on the day. Whoever's feeling like pretty good or whatever happens after the game, whoever's not banged up, we try to play a little bit. And how does that sort of keep you guys competitive? Because I'm sure during the season practices are different because you're learning about the next opponent, it's all in game plans. How does that kind of keep you competitive on your off days when you, not necessarily off days, but days you aren't playing games? Um, it works out very well for us, actually, because on the offensive end, we get to late shot clock a lot. So you got to be able to make a play with, you know, the clock winding down. You, we go 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So you got to be able to make a play right there. And then defensively, we hang our hat on defense. So you got to be able to guard your man one-on-one. -on -one. So it works both ways. Uh, we saw Dalian Johnson get get his first start, and you know he's played some some big minutes here or there, made some some three pointers. Um, what have you kind of seen behind the scenes with with how he's come along this year to get to that point where where he's starting, and what does he bring when when he's on the court? Personally, I think Dalian is a great player. I think he's going to be really good too because he just works hard and listens, and he's always in the gym just trying to get better. And for him to hurt his back right in on his first start was kind of was kind of sad. But you know he's going to come back. He's a warrior. And, you know, Dowling, Dowling gives us quickness, shooting, space. And, you know, as the season goes on and he keeps playing more, Dowling's going to be really good. What's it like playing on a team with a bunch of old guys? 
uh, I love it. I mean, even when we go up and down and on the road and stuff like that in games, you know, everybody's like resilient, like we can come back, we can do this, and everybody stays locked into what we have to do. And then even when you go out and you get pummeled at Indiana, some young teams would have been like, let's just fold the season right there. But we're all locked in. Like, we know what happened that game. We make our adjustments to it. And then, you know, we come out the next game, we don't get a great one. But then we come back home in front of our fans, and then we get a good win against Iowa. We just beat us like a couple of days before that. That's just – you know, that's just being veteran guys and knowing that every game counts, you know, for net ranking and tournament time and everything like that. And what's the most old guy feeling that you've had this year in terms of like, man, I've been playing basketball forever. I've been in college forever. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is like a couple, I think this is like a couple of weeks ago. I got out the cold tub and I was walking. I was like, oh my God, my back hurts. John's walking and he's like, my hip hurts. And then my, was like, my knee hurts. And we're all like, oh my God, we're all so old in here. It's just, <laughs> that was just an old person feeling right there. Uh, Miles, was he like somebody who kind of took you under his wing when you got here? I mean, obviously, you guys are both guards. I, I don't know, in position group. But, uh, and what do, we, what do we not see about him behind the scenes? Uh, Miles is a very, friendly person so when I first got here you know of course everybody's like trying to get introduced to somebody or get to meet new people well Miles was just like around 24 7 just introducing us to like everybody and being anybody and just being around so he was a great person in that regard and then just like as a teammate he just wants to win and he's a spot-up shooter so Miles is always nice to me because he wants me passing the ball all the time so <laughs> I mean I love Miles and he's a good guy What's it like playing with John? I mean, John is never going to turn into Joel Embiid overnight, but he is going to give you a – he's one of those guys that you, if you said, you know, John might die on the court tonight, he's trying so hard, you might believe it. I, I mean, what is it like to play with a guy who just sort of gives everything the way that he does? Um, John, just like Seth's defense, we feed off John's energy too. When John goes up and grabs a two-hand rebound and, like, yanks it from the other team or he yanks it from three guys, everybody just gets behind him like, yeah, John, like, yeah. We just love it. I mean, he had a career high last game, and nobody works harder than John. He was in here every day at 1.30 working out. And then even after that game, how hard he played, where he's dying in the huddles, can't even breathe, he comes in and lifts. We got treatment, and I'm walking by, and he's in there in a full lift, benching half the weight room. And I'm like, this guy's crazy. Like, he, he can't even barely walk it, but he's like, I got to lift, pick. I got to lift. So we just love John, and that's the type of people we need on the team, people who are bought in and just working harder each and every day. Thank you.